So remember, a binomial is just a, a little algebraic expression that has something plus or minus something else. And it turns out that we love binomials, and the binomials appear a lot in nature and math and science and all sorts of subjects. And a lot of times we have to combine them. And if, in particular, we have to multiply them. And so we've seen some of these things before, but I just want to try to give you a more general sense of, of the formulas that you could, if you wanted to, actually memorize in order to uh, consider multiplying binomials together. And I want to start with a real famous one, probably my favorite, actually, which is what happens if you multiply a plus b times a minus b? And the answer, and so I just know this one. So this is one I guess I, I technically have memorized, but really I just, I've done it so often I just know it. It's the difference of the squares. So it's a squared minus b squared. And you can actually check this for yourself by just foiling. Let me just show you the foiling really, really fast here. a times a is a squared. Boom. That looks good. Then you've got the um, outside terms, which is a times negative b, so that's negative ab. And then you have the inside terms, which is b times a, which is ab. So you have negative ab plus ab. Well, they kill each other. And you're left with b times negative b, which is negative b squared. So you're left with a squared minus b squared. So that's really cool. So whenever you see something, a binomial, multiplied by almost the exact same thing with this, the sign. When sign changed, you always know how to write that. So that's a real cool, cool thing. Now, there are other similar kind of cool things I just want to share with you real fast. Like, what if you take a binomial and square it? Well, if you take a binomial and square it, there's actually a really cool formula. You can derive yourself a plus b squared is equal to this. And it literally is just foiling again. So you could say, foiled again. And you'd be right. <laughs> Isn't that great? I made a little joke of it. All right, so let me just show you why this is true. If you take a plus b and multiply it by a plus b, then a times a is a squared, and then the outside terms is, uh, produces an ab, the inside term produces an ab, and then the last, b times b, is b squared. And so check it out. I've got a squared, and then I've got two ab's, so that's 2ab plus b squared. And that's exactly the formula. So I just derived it for you. So if you really don't want to memorize the formula, or you're going, gee, I'm going to forget the two, if you ever get stuck, do it the, the Ed Berger way, which is literally to just work it out if you have to and foil. But foil carefully. And I want to now share with you one of my favorite famous mistakes. Every person has done this in their lives when they're looking at this thing. What is this? A lot of people will say, oh, I know what it is. It's really easy. It equals a squared plus b squared. That is a classic algebra mistake. And it, it could not be wronger. So this is really a great mistake. I want you to see it. I want you to celebrate it and realize this is wrong. This is wrong. No, 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 no. Because by doing that, you've totally forgotten that, that middle term. Here is the correct formula. So that's the correct formula. So you can memorize that if you want, or just know how to actually foil it out for yourself. I want to share with you another one. This is um, <clears throat> a similar expression, really. It's just that I have a minus b squared. And if you have a minus b squared, it turns out it works out to be a very similar thing, a squared. But now it's minus 2ab plus b squared. And literally, that negative sign just comes from the inside and the outside being both negative. So if you foiled it out, just like I did in the previous thing, you could actually derive this for yourself. It's the exact same thing, except that sign has been changed. Notice that this is still positive, because a negative b times negative b is a positive b squared. So just careful on that. OK, so there's a fun one. Aren't these fun? I love them. Now, what if you want to take a binomial and cube it? That means you take the binomial and multiply it by itself again and again. So you have three copies. Check it out. You can actually derive this crazy formula for yourself. And I'll tell you how, and I'll let you do it. But I'll tell you how. All you've got to do is realize what a cube is. So all a cube is, really, is just three copies. So a plus b times a plus b. Uh oh, I'm dying. Hold on one second. These things can kill you. Oh, look at that. They don't even give me one. This is very sad. I'm going to switch to purple. I bet you can't even tell the difference. A plus B. Three copies. Well, what are, are these two? Well, those are two copies. So I could write that as A plus B squared 
times a plus b. And a plus b squared, I just told you the rule, or you could just foil it out in your head if you want. It equals that. And so now all you've got to do is take this a and distribute it all the way through, take the b and distribute it all the way through, and take all those terms and add up those monomials, like terms, combining, and so forth, and you get this. So there's the formula, which is a cubed plus 3a squared b plus 3ab squared plus b cubed. And you see there's a certain kind of a pattern to it, and you have to remember the coefficients here are 3 if you want to memorize this. And there's a similar formula if you have a minus b cubed. And notice the pattern of the signs. It's, there's a plus sign here, then minus, then plus, then minus. So it's the exact same formula, except that these two signs, every other sign, in fact, becomes negative. That's the only difference. All right, <clears throat> let's take a look at some examples where you could actually uh, look at these and use them in practice, which is great fun. Here's the first one. Here's a binomial. I'm squaring it. So I have x plus 4y squared. Now, the way that I would do that is just literally foil it out. But suppose you want to actually use the formula just to kind of see what the formula looks like in action. You're saying, I want to see it in action. Well, to see the formula in action, what you have to do is you have to identify the a and identify the b. So what's the a? Well, the a here is the first term, which is just x. And then what's the b? The b is the second term, which is 4y. And so now if you were to plug that into this formula, you would see that this thing equals a squared, that's x squared, plus 2 times a, b. So that's 2 times x times 4y. And so x times 4y is 4xy plus b squared. That's 4y squared. So what do I see here? I see x squared plus, and 2 times 4 is 8, xy plus, and now I've got to square everybody. So square the 4, I get 16. Square the y. I get y squared. And so I see the answer of x squared plus 8xy plus 16y squared. And that is the answer. You could have actually checked your answer if you want by just literally foiling this out carefully and you'll get the same answer. So that's awesome. Let's try just one more. I know you want to do a lot more, but I'm only going to give you one more and I'm cutting you off. Let's take 3p squared minus r and cube it. So notice the negative sign there. So if you want to actually use the formula, you go through your little arsenal of fun facts. And you're going to want to look at this formula we're going to apply. And how are we going to apply it? Well, we have to identify the a and the b. Well, the a in this case, notice, is 3p squared. It's that whole monomial. It's a fancy way of saying the whole clump in front. And then what's the b? Well, notice that the form is a minus b. Something minus b. So the b is r. The b is r. And now it's just a matter of literally um, using this formula that, that I explained to you how you could derive yourself. So it's a cubed, so I have to cube that. So that's 3p squared cubed, then a minus sign, and then a 3 times a squared. So that's 3p squared squared times b, that's r, then plus 3. A, which is 3p squared, times b squared, which is just r squared, and then minus, notice how the signs are alternating, minus b cubed, which in this case would be r cubed. Okay, and now we've got to kind of clean things up a little bit. So what is 3 cubed? That's 27. And then what's p squared cubed? We multiply the exponents, and so I see p to the sixth power. And then I see uh, minus 3 squared. Well, 3 squared is 9 times 3 is 27. So I'm just going to write 27. And then I've got p squared squared. That's p to the fourth. And then I've got an r. Then plus 3 times 3 is 9. And then I have a p squared. And then I have an r squared. And then I have a minus r cubed. And that long, crazy looking thing is the expansion of this expression. Now you might say, gee, can I combine things? No, you got to leave it just like that because there are no like terms. These are p to the 6. 
These are p to the fourth times r's. These are p squared times r squareds, and these are p. Uh, these are r to the third power. And so, in fact, there are no ways to combine them. This crazy-looking, impressive long answer is really the expansion of that. That's why this is so much cooler. Just in that little teeny bit of information, we've actually expressed all of this. That's the power of looking at powers of binomials. Have fun with them. I'll see you soon.